I'm Juicy Jones, that's Polish Vape UK, and this is our guest right here, Sean Payne Vapes, and this is Vaping Dawn to Dusk on Orbital Vaping Headquarters. Hey, everybody. Hello. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Awesome. Nice. You guys look fantastic. So this is Vaping Dawn to Dusk. This is a story where, or the show, rather, on YouTube, where we bring stories from regular vaping people and our friends of the show to you guys so that we can all talk about how tough it was to quit smoking. And uh, first, I guess we'll do a little a little uh, business. You got anything going on this week, Luke? There's a whole ton of stuff going on, I know. <coughs> uh, I've got some reviews to get done, which I may get some done tomorrow. I've got a few juice reviews that need to be done. Um, <clears throat> I'm even thinking that I'm possibly ready to review the Limitless, but I may give it another week, because at the moment I'm still running their standard coils that came in it. I may chuck some Claptons in there and oh. see how they go. But You actually use their coils? How was it? Yeah, they're coming out at 0. 0.32. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they are, though. A lot of people said <clears throat> they're supposed to be campfold, but I'm not 100% sure if they are, mm -hmm. and it doesn't say anything on the box. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I think they've got some stainless on there because when I heated the coil up to compress it it actually the wire turned blue which i've never seen that happen except from stainless interesting i don't so, know that much about the metallurgy about that stuff but i i was i am surprised we're actually using those and i'm pleasantly surprised that they're actually good i tell you my my advice is yeah throw some claptons in that and look what happens because yeah. you already <clears throat> relatively like it i know and i think that will really send you over the edge yeah i don't i don't usually use the coils um that come with RDAs and I, I usually say this in my re review because usually when I put them in they're really silly low like 1.1 yeah. 0.15 so I don't usually use them that's right. <clears throat> so I put them in tested them and they were fine so I left them in and they look good too I was like wow those look pretty good I'm kind of surprised better than notch coils well that's killer uh yeah I've got I totally have got this new vat mod QP tank that I just got in the mail yesterday. It's kind of like a um, just a sub tank. It's not really like a super sub omer. It's just more like a almost mount to lung. Although it's not it's not restricted enough to be mount to lung, but <laughs> it's sort of like a high nick tank. <clears throat> Juicy Skeletor said that the overlay doesn't say it says foofy. Oh my god! Do I do this every week? <laughs> like I did the same thing last week, <laughs> didn't I? Yep. There it is, right there. Boom. Pain vapes. Forgive me, everybody. This is our friend Sean Payne. Pain vapes. How are you, Sean? Hello. Hello there, guys. <laughs> now that I've got the correct, over the correct overlay on there, your hair looks foofy, uh, but I know that you're not. She was, she was great, and that was a fun time. But this is the new show. Sean, how are you doing? What is going on over there? You're Pretty in Ohio, good. the presidential state, right? Yeah. Um, nice. It's... Gonna be ninety today, and I'm not looking forward to that. But the air conditioning is on. I don't believe in that. So I'm just hanging out with you guys, enjoying the AC until you melt. Are you gonna get shorter yeah. during the show? I'm gonna have to go outside at some point today, and I'm gonna just probably die. Yeah. They sell suits. You can put on a suit, right? With that, <laughs> have a hose back uh, to your house. I was planning. On, I was hoping to go swimming today, but like last, not two weeks ago, I was at work and I sliced my hand open with a box cutter, and I got. 13 stitches. Oh my god, that looks heinous. So, yeah, I've been pretty much just like sitting at home for like almost three weeks. I think I might go back to work on Monday. Oh, good for you. I bet you've been going crazy. Yeah, I couldn't play guitar for like two weeks and I couldn't even rebuild my coils for like two weeks. Because, yeah, one, hand injuries just, like, are the worst. Right where my thumb moves. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, it's it pretty terrible. It hurts to look. I'm so sorry for that, by the way. Uh, Other than that, I'm well. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're getting better. <laughs> yeah. So, Sean, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. And I know we that we met on Instagram and here through the channel. Yeah. And you have a cool Instagram page with super cool photographs. You have some of the coolest photographs on there. They're so tight. And uh, especially Thanks. since you were telling, and you can tell everybody also how why they started getting so great lately because you're saying how you switched to using just your better camera all the time. And uh, but I want to make sure that everybody gets your vaping story. Because that's one of the things we do for posterity here. Because I want to know how long you smoked and how much you smoked and uh, how much trouble it was or not for you to quit. You did. Um, well, yeah, to start off, yeah. You can follow me on Pain Vapes on Instagram. I've been doing that for like five or six months. And yeah, 
pretty good feed if you uh, like good old vape photography. And other than that, I mean, yeah, my some of us like vape story, photography. I mean, I started smoking when I was 16 years old. Just, I mean, just like everyone else does, just cigarettes around. I decided to start smoking, and I smoked from 16 to 23. I just quit in September. That's amazing. Um, Did your parents smoke? Yeah, my mom smoked, my dad smoked, and it's like I tried everything to quit. I tried the gum. I tried. I never tried the patch, but I got acupuncture done and wow. kind of almost quit, but you ended up starting smoking again. I mean, even when I had acupuncture, I was still smoking like at least two or three cigarettes a day, and like my mom had smoked my whole life. My dad smoked. He got acupuncture and quit for nine years and then started smoking again a few years back and still smokes now. He vapes too sometimes, but he just pretty much smokes mostly. Did um, you give him one of those Indican kits? He has like a little like Kanger kit with some like tobacco flavored juice, which is like I don't know why it doesn't work for him, but I mean, maybe he needs the Indican kit that has like the real tight draw. Yeah, I know. I feel like I should just like give him like a like a dripper or something like something like super intense or just like instant satisfaction. So like, I bet you it's the fact that it's not like a cigarette. Yeah, I don't know. I told him to like try to like step away from the tobacco flavor to just kind of like break the break the need because like I feel like if you're like vaping tobacco, then you end, then you kind of like instantly like crave that cigarette taste, and it's like for me. My friend, my friend Nick that I was doing reviews with on the Cloud Castle channel, he he has vaped for a long time, like for like years and years and years while I was still smoking, and I never really understood what what it was about because he was vaping in like the beginning when like all the stuff was like real like real like weird and kind of chintzy and like yeah. nothing like we have now, like none of the real nice stuff and uh like the limitless he, yeah exactly and he like I ended up just like one week I was at work and I was like you know what. I think I'm going to quit smoking this week. And I, he took me to the shop and, like, helped me pick out a vape. And I got some, like, strawberry cotton candy flavor. It was, like, an IPVD3 and, like, an Arctic V8 tank. What a good pal. I fucking, I straight up threw my cigarettes away, and I never smoked another cigarette again. I vaped like that. That's wonderful. Instant, instant gratification. I mean, so you had a hard time, and you tried a bunch of different stuff, too. Oh, yeah. I never thought I was going to quit smoking. But it was, like, one of those things. Just like Every time I smoked a cigarette, I hated myself for it. And Isn't I just, like, always awful? knew that. Yeah, I always knew that I needed to quit, but nothing really worked. And like, I never, I didn't even really think vaping was going to work. I kind of like went and like spent like two hundred dollars on the whole setup and everything. And I was like, man, I'm gonna be really pissed if I waste my money on this because, like, as with everything with quitting smoking, usually it doesn't work. Yeah. And then I, it was fucking seamless. I was so surprised. Well, that's good. I'm really glad you had another. And I mean, like, I got pretty much all my friends to quit smoking cigarettes. My brother, my mom, everyone. Everyone I know kind of vapes. It's fantastic that so many people who aren't going to die early. Yeah, the only person I really know that smokes is like my dad smokes sometimes still. But other than that, my mom's got the little like pink Kanger sub vodka kit. That's cool. So go hook her up with juice every once in a while and she loves it. You gotta find a way to get your dad one of those Anakin kits. I swear they're like smoking, except it's. Right. Safe. They're really good. Um. That's awesome, dude. So you quit really recently, and so and your parents smoking. I know exactly how that is. Like I grew up in the '70s as a child, and there were people smoking all over the place around me. The only person who didn't smoke was my mother, and even she, I, even she, I, I remember during their divorce, picked up like bought a pack of cigarettes and smoked it, never touched them again. But like that's how it was. There was a lot of stress and pressure to smoke, and so I started when I was in my teens as well. I'm so I never, I never yeah. thought that I would ever. I remember, I remember being a kid and like throwing my mom's cigarettes away and like, you know, like I'll never smoke. And then there I was. Another oh, that statistic. I must have made you feel terrible when you started smoking. Yeah. Yeah. That's another but, thing I hated about smoking is I hated myself all the time for doing it. Yeah. Because I knew I was hurting myself, you know. But it's like you, you just crave it so bad, and you just like totally overlook the fact that every cigarette you smoke, you're killing yourself. That's right. But it is a physical neat. addiction. What are you vaping on right now, by the way? I can't believe I didn't ask you. Oh, me? I'm vaping. I got a Dot Mod Petri V2 and then a Minikin V1.5, and I'm vaping this uh, Royalty 2 by Vaptasia. It's so nice. fucking good. 
you show off that minikin some more because I'm going to try to reach through the screen and take it from you. It's not working. I can't get oh. it. Hold on. I got just the. Oh, wait. I got the corner. No, it won't come through. I, I love those things. Up. This thing is a really good setup. Can't put it down. That's killer. Petri's is so, such a good setup. So, like, for the last like week, I've been like vaping like stuff I wasn't really hyped about. And I was just like, man. I don't think I'm ever going to vape anything I like again. And then, like, I got this RDA and this fucking Royalty 2, and I'm back at it. Nice. Do you have a Limitless yet? <laughs> well, I've asked everybody. <laughs> I've, uh, I don't know. I haven't really gotten into the tank thing. I wasn't, I was, like, I had, like, the sub ohm tanks with just, like, coil heads and stuff. And then once I got a dripper, I don't know. I kind of just exclusively just use That's the dripper. It's right. so, like, I use, I use my Serpent Mini when I drive or if I'm at work. But other than that, I don't know. I just think that like my buddy was my buddy told me when I was talking to him about getting a dripper. I was like, man, I don't know if I want a dripper. I feel like it's kind of inconvenient. And he was just like, dude, it tastes yeah, it's so pretty good. easy. And then once I got a dripper and I started dripping, I was like, he was not lying. Like the flavor is off the charts. Yeah. And especially in something like this, it's like fucking. But I. Like, but drinking. for every everyone always says this. Everyone always says, oh, my Aroma Miser is as close to a dripper as I've ever seen. Oh, oh, my Griffin is as close to a dripper as I've ever seen. Oh, my VCMT. Oh, my BST. It's like, Everyone says it's that, but I'm like telling you. It's like direct flavor from the fucking coil to your... I'm telling you, Luke, contradict me. The, the Limitless is as close to a dripper as you get. <clears throat> yeah, I'm... It I'm, kind of is. It's like a drip pan kind of thing. Yeah, I'll definitely like... Like you know, I didn't. I didn't get on with the aromaizer. I absolutely hated That's the Luke aromaizer. Well. Luke is your story. Luke is like all these are horrible. <laughs> yeah. and he's had them all too. <laughs> yeah, I've tried so many different RTA tanks, and I just can't get on with them. Or or they yeah, have an just, issue. Yeah, issue I feel like every them. time I do it, it's like I'm just like a fucking building novice, and they end up fucking leaking everywhere, and I just want to. Yep. I just hate myself. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, not yeah, not the <laughs> avocado and not the limitless. Those two are the exception. They really and I you know I don't care if anyone buys these things or not. But I think my it's Serpent funny. Mini has never leaked on me. Yeah, I'm sure but that's We're the only the... like the only tank good tank experience I've had, other than the uh, the Crown tank. Yeah, well the Crown's just a clear mind. I hated the Crown RDA, but the Crown clear mind clear mind is great. I'm a, the only tank I like that you buy coils for is the Crown. To be honest. Yeah, I had a TFE4 Mini, and I, it would just fucking leak all the time. And I was just like, I can't fucking deal with this anymore. <laughs> it would drive me crazy. Yeah, it was just like, I had to get rid of it. And that's why I just drip. It's like, the only way a dripper is going to leak is if you overdrip. Yeah. Well, or if you have bottom airflow. Well, yeah, that too. And <laughs> I actually like, all of you I, love your bottom I just airflow. got rid of my Tsunami for that reason. I was yeah. like super excited about the Tsunami RDA, and I like pre-ordered it and shit. And then it came, and I like went to Tennessee with it. And, like, the whole weekend, I was just like, dude, I fucking hate this thing. Right. I just want to throw it in the fucking river. Because it would just leak on me all the time. And it, like, boils it. I don't know. Bottom airflow, I don't have much. I'm not a huge fan either. You know, I like side airflow, personally. That's my I had a mutation, too, and I, I hated that thing day one. But apparently, the new V5 doesn't have this problem, I think. I mean, it's bottom airflow. It's like, you're, it's going to leak. Oh, but yeah, here at the new mutation, like the juice just kind of like sits at the bottom. It doesn't like leak out, but it's like it's still there. Hanging out. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's say hello to everybody, by the way. I forgot this little Papa Smurf, Michaela, Matthew Mazzicardi. Hey, Steve, hello. come back and it's just here. I haven't, I haven't been looking at the chat like at all. Owen's here, obviously. Flavor Hunter. <laughs> uli, 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 uli. Everybody, good morning. Steve Gibson, Milkman John, Bob W. Uh, Bob said, hi, all first post. He won. He won the contest. For all that. <laughs> yeah, Tony Dixon totally agrees with you on the, on the tsunami yeah. right here. It's a leaka. A leaka baby. I know, I don't have much tolerance for that. And yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted to drip and go, you know. I just want to vape and have it be easy. And so far, this has been working for me, so. It's, much, it's, kind of, it's one of the reasons why I, you know, I went through all of these bottom tank RDAs, these modern, these sort of recent Genesis style ones, and the only two that really don't leak. You know, I could say, quote, don't leak. Anything leaks, by the way, audience. Right, guys? Anything yep. can leak. Let's just I mean, say. I'll, like, overdrip on this, and I'll tip it. And uh, fucking yesterday, <laughs> fucking, I had, like, hot juice drip on my leg. I love that, when you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you're, like, triple taking on yourself. Like, who just spat hot? <laughs> Dragon yeah, food. It's like, what is that? Yeah. So for the record, anything can leak. But you know, these these are pretty good too. 
And I really like Tidy RD. He's like, I actually like the Goon for that too. The Goon is not a leaker. It's built like one of those Watofos. It's built like a Sapor on the bottom. I have my Goon. But for some reason, I don't know if it's because it's brass and the oxidation on it. I'll put a build in it and I'll vape it for like two days. And then all of a sudden I'll get this really bad flavor from it. Maybe that is some weird oxidation. I confess. The inside of the cap has oxidized like instantly. Yeah, I confess on my goon, I have trouble with the, the copper keeping it clean. I mean, a lot of trouble. It's tough. And yeah, it's I my have fault any, for not getting stainless future. steel. Yeah, I probably that's... should have gotten stainless. Yeah, think, same. In retrospect, because I love that RDA for the, I mean, the flavor in it. When it's clean, like, and you're right, mine starts tasting funny from the copper. I can taste that. But yeah. when it's clean, holy shit. It's like, it's like as good as my Twisted Messes when it's all cleaned. And so I have a feeling that I screwed up a little bit there. I feel like eventually I might want to buy, like, are they going to revise it eventually? And maybe then I'll just buy another one and I'll get stainless or black. Yeah. Oh, now they have like other colors too. I forgot about that. They have black and. Yeah, I feel like they have like red and like weird yeah. colors like that too. Something else. I swear I saw a green or a blue, but I might just be imagining. Yeah, I mean, I was like super stoked on the brass. I was like, yeah, it's going to look super cool, but. The end I of the day. I got the hybrid ring for my rig V2, and so I'm running my Twisted Messes on it. I had my Lush in here earlier, but I took it off to put it on something else, and I lost it around the house. So I, I, gave my, gonna... I gave my Lush to my brother. You are a kind person. <laughs> yeah. Who loves their brother. <laughs> that and my Chieftain. That's actually... Oh, the Chieftain is a great freaking thing. That's like a... Su so he needs some battery life, doesn't he? Yeah. Is that what's up here? Did your brother well, he, lose his mod? Yeah. He had a Fukai, and he yeah. sold it to his friend for like 120 bucks or something. And uh, he, uh, he just didn't have another mod, so I gave him my other Minikin, and the other Minikin was like acting weird, so I just gave him my Chieftain because I wasn't using it. Oh, the Chieftain is, dude, he's stoked. That's like That's a, a super it's long a really, battery life, decent mod. like a really good, like, simple mod. Yeah, nice I think terrible. vaping with Twisted 420 did a pretty good job just with the, you know, it's got the, the indicator on the button. Oh, it's, not the, it's not the Twisted Triple. It's just the, it's a two, ver, two battery version. The Twisted Triple is kind of, it's like a triple va battery version of the Chieftain. But apparently like... the Chieftain was the same thing without the sticker on it. Um, it's, one's a two battery and one's a three battery. There you go. There I think go. the I Still think the Twisted sound. Triple is like a series box or something. It's a series box, yeah. Does it have? Uh, does yours have the indicator light button? Oh, I don't have a Twisted Triple. No, no, no. I mean, your Chieftain. Did it have the oh, indicator light button? It's got a screen. It's regulated. I knew they were regulated, but I didn't know it had an actual screen. Because yeah, it does. The Twisted Four Twenty One doesn't have a screen. It's no, also it's regulated. Got the, it's just got the light on the inside. Yeah, yeah. It's also regulated. It just has, only has a light for the indicator. I prefer a mod with a screen, honestly. I usually do too, to be honest. Like I've been using my Homewrecker G2 lately, and I forget how much I like this thing because it's so yeah, efficient. Just, just like knowing when your battery's dead and stuff like that. Yeah, but on the other hand, I use this. The mod that I use the most is my Nuve Alpha, and it has at least a voltimeter. And yeah, I have to check my batteries a lot. Yeah, I have a, I have this, but I never use it because it doesn't have a screen. Yeah. And I was so excited to get it. Is that the Hexome clone or a real Hexome? It's a real Hexome. Oh, does it have the voltimeter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just a potentiometer. Yeah, yeah that's correct. <coughs> they're nice. I'm loving the Hexomes. Well, yeah. I'm actually trying to sell that. <gasps> yeah. Good, so you can, afford, so you can get a better one, a Nuve mod. Oh! <laughs> Right. Hexomes are cool, but I don't know if they live up to the hype as much. I mean, it just depends really what you're feeling. And if you really like a Hexome, buy a Hexome. But I kind of wish I would have spent the money on like a DNA 200 device or something. Something with a LiPo. I just want the convenience of just plugging my mod in. Well, I, I must say I really like my LiPo mods. In fact, you'll giggle, but I'm using my, my Cuboid Mini here with this this Cubist tank, this QP tank, sorry, from Vapmod, Vapemod. And the freaking Cuboid Mini is, a, is so great. I mean, having a LiPo instead of an 18650 just means that you get better voltage as the thing dies. You know, you don't have as much waiting around I mean, in battery. A, in a con I mean, if you're on a trip or something, it's like you don't got to bring batteries. You just plug it in yeah. and you're good to go. Dot Mod just made, uh, they have a dot box now. It's a 
dot mod DNA 200 box. It looks so sweet. I've I seen that too. It looks great. Yeah. Good, Luke. <clears throat> no, I haven't seen it yet, actually. The only, okay. <clears throat> the only thing I really I've wish I had about... the money for an Axis Vapes, but, you know, I don't got yeah. that. See, I've <clears throat> I had the DNA 200, but I don't know. The only one that, obviously, that I've seen is obviously the one that Juicy's got, the Hot Sig, which mm-hmm. is, obviously, when you're out, you can actually... Because if you're out and it dies, you can't do nothing. You're screwed. Yeah. With a DNA, with a DNA 200, unless it's got a rechangeable jet battery. That's one of the things I don't like about the DNA 200s, the lipos. You can't plug them in if you're... Yeah, you can't change it if you're out. And I've had mine now for <coughs> nine or ten months, and the battery is... Uh, no, nine months, and the battery is... So, almost ten months. And uh, the batteries are finally dying. So... That I just need to buy new batteries off eBay and solder them in. Yeah. I could buy replacement batteries from Hotsig, for the record, all of you people, and I just don't want to pay $50 each for them. But you know what I'm really sad about? I didn't buy the double 18650 sled quick enough, and now they're, you can't buy them anymore. Uh, if anybody in the audience has a, an 18650, dual 18650 sled for the Hotsig DX200 DNA, and you want to sell it to me, please do. <laughs> they were 30 bucks, and I just never bought one. And if you don't use it, I'll buy yours. I need one of those. Uh, but I really like the DNA 200, uh, uh, just the hot sig one for that very reason, Luke. And that's why I've been kind of mentally shopping out DNA 200s again to see which one I would get if I didn't just change these batteries. And I thought, you know what? The reason I've loved this all these months is these two batteries. Oh. When I walk out the door, if I take both batteries, I know that I can be out all day and come back tomorrow if I want to and my ship will still be working. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's the one mod I've never had. Never had a DNA 200, and I really kind of want one. Yeah, it's fun to experiment with. They, the the thing I like about it is that it's a good benchmark for me to gauge all the other DNA, all the other mods I've got, to right. see if they're telling the truth about their about their wattage. Because I don't have any other scientific equipment. I don't have a resistance thing or any of that stuff. But I do have a DNA 200, and it does tell the truth. Firing stuff, A to A comparisons. Yeah. What I have a question for for you guys and for everybody too. I was talking about this with somebody before the show on Skype, and I don't have an answer for this. I should ask, and what do people... I used to be a really, really avid backcountry hiker and and all that, and so um, what do people who have to go on like seven to nine day backcountry hikes do if they vape? Take something probably like a, like a AIO and then bring like a like portable battery pack and just plug it in to the USB. Yeah. That's, that's a good option. I'm like just a carry. Some, some oh, you can just you can yeah, just you carry can. a shitload of eighteen six fifties. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is you, that's charger, not really a good option. Because, into a tree. Yeah, this is where lipos start to become a big deal, right? This is the same yeah. thing because lipos are very light. But you know, I, I've got so many questions. Like, do we have solar technology good enough to be able to charge anything significant like this? Like, like if I took my my cuboid mini with its little 2400 ma lipo and a USB charger. Could I use this solar, or do we have crank chargers? You well, know, you, like, what do they have do? like battery banks that kind of look like like an external hard drive. You just oh, get yeah, like yeah. You just get a few of those. But even those things die, and don't forget that any battery exposed to low temperatures operates less efficiently. And the truth is, you're going to be carrying a lot of those things. I guess it yeah. depends where you're going. Maybe you just can't vape. Yeah, because this is a 2400 ma. Uh, lipo, for example, and I can easily plow through this one in half a day. Mm-hmm. Even the biggest battery pack is only, you know, you can get one for 2,000 ma or 6,000 ma, but then we're only talking about 12 charges. So well, you, you got, I, mean? I would bring like, and then what if it's something, with a, on something the with a lipo and a battery pack, and then I would just bring like us, like, like eight 18650s. I would just bring an 18650 mod, and I would bring like a lipo mod and just. Hope for the best, I guess. Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually investigate this some more too and ask people because there's, you know, that's a good question though because I wondered uh, that like when I went hiking in the Smokies, like I was only out there for a day, but yeah, because you know what I would probably do is take lozenges, like because that is the smallest, lightest way to carry nicotine. <clears throat> Um, or maybe the patch. I hate the patches because I don't think they work for shit. I would just start chewing. Ooh, just yuck. <laughs> oh, 
That's where I would draw the line. I hey, there's nothing that. like there's nothing like the trail and a fat chaw. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, I would never. I've done do some that. astonishingly yucky things in the wild, but I would, I would oh, never do that. And that's the thing with vaping. I think I could go nine days without vaping just fine. Uh, that's possible. I know I could go a couple. Yeah. TD Wester says solar chargers work great now, so maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe they make simple. they actually make like a, it's like a it's like folds up, and you fold it out, and it's just like a mini solar pad that has like a USB bay on it, and you just plug your stuff into it. They also make a solar powered generator on the internet. That's interesting. So that's a little big for hiking, but I mean something fold out would be perfect. Well, yeah, I know. Like the yeah. like the fold out thing is like perfect. It's just kind of like a binder it folds out, and then if you're in the sun, you just charge your stuff up while you're in the sun and pack it all up and go on your way. And someone's saying that he saw an ad for one you can burn wooden grade electricity, but if there was an adapter for your camp stove, you know, you're already hiking in quite a bit of camp stove. You right. Know. And, you know, like, if, for example, if I go in for a seven-day hike, I would bring four or five bottles of white fuel, camp fuel. So if there was something efficient enough, you could, you could charge and cook. That would be cool. Although that seems very inefficient, I mean, to be honest. There's got to be ways to do that kind of stuff because, like, people who, like, like National Geographic and like crazy people who go out yeah. and like film and stuff. They gotta have like a bunch of solar powered equipment to recharge their stuff when they're out. And like, That's right, battery packs extraordinary, yeah. right? Or generators. But like, when they go out, they might like have a vehicle Steve, with a generator. Steve No Backinist. He says, "I have a 21,000 mile power bank." Yeah, who wants to put a, a five ten on it? Lol. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a lot of battery to last you for like. If you got a couple of those. Well, but the problem is, it's only two amps. Okay. So try to It'll vape charge on that. Like super <laughs> slow. <laughs> well, it's just gonna vape like shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about for for the practical use of just charging your stuff on the go. Well, that's fine because you know I charge my Cuboid Mini on a one amp charger on the wall. So ah. two amp charge would be perfectly fine. When I go out to Portland, I'm just taking two fucking Ego AIOs and a couple and my battery my battery pack and. Plug it into the car and stuff like that. I'm just not trying to go through fucking airport security with a whole bunch of mods and shit because I don't want to take shit, you yeah, know? Yeah, they don't mess with you. I, I've I been mean, through... It's just like an ego AIO. It's just like, it's I've so been through easy to conceal. And... I'd just like rather have that in my pocket when I'm out exploring and stuff instead of like bottles of juice and fucking 18650s oh, yeah. and stuff. I've been through the, to the airport line with my vape stuff and they never screwed with me. And this is my first time going through airport security. Yeah, they don't. Being they're not there to intercede with you quitting smoking. That's, right. They usually say nothing. I've seen a couple of stories about them doing this shit, but I've been through and they're uh, like, and I took, don't forget, I took through an iTaste SVD. That is a fucking lightsaber made of steel. <laughs> so this is not like some inconspicuous little thing. This is like a thing that goes off on their thing like a what the fuck with two batteries in it, right? That are dense. And they show up as Or they just orange. look at you like, yeah, what but are you doing? They open the bag and went, great, here you go. They didn't even ask. If it was a vape, but they looked at it and said it's not a bomb. I mean, I don't know. You know how it is going to the airport. It's like a weird, like nerve wracking. Like I agree. you just want to get it over with. I agree. It makes me extremely nervous, even though I've done nothing wrong. I just and, like, feel like I have, I have. I'm going out there with my grandmother and my little and my brother. So oh, that'll be fun. It's like my my grandma is just like she's this really nice lady, and like we we were coming back from Portland uh, in Thanksgiving of two years ago, and you know you print off your boarding pass, right? Yeah. Well, she folded hers up and put it in her purse, and she goes up to the lady to scan it, and the crease was, like, on the coat, oh, or on the scanning part, and they started giving her a bunch of flack about it. So my grandma is at airport security crying because, like, they're making her feel like a criminal, and then she's, like, this sweet old lady, you know? And, like, they finally, someone came up and finally let her through, but it's, like, at airport, at our airport security, do I really want to stress my grandma while, I, while airport security is, like, frolicking through all my vape gear, you know? I hope you had words with them. Uh, kind of, yeah, I did. Because I would have said, oh, wait, why are you terrorizing this nice old woman who never That's did anything I said. wrong? I was, like, I was literally, and the guy came up and was like, oh, she can go. I was like, thanks for, like, being, like, a real human being and understanding that my grandma is obviously not trying to pull a fast one with her fucking creased boarding pass. Yeah, the police state that the United States has become is a complete yeah. joke. So fucked. It's like, oh, she's got a crease in her boarding pass. Get her. I just busted out my my Cubist tank, in honor of your I.O. traveling. Here's my question for you. Does, does your I.O. taste like metal to you, no matter what? I haven't even gotten one yet. I'm literally buying two of them just for the trip. Okay, because I've got the Cubist tank, which is the same thing, on the VTC Mini here, 
And some people have said the same thing I have, and that all of my Joytech tanks, my Tron tank, my Cubus Mini, or my Cubus tank, they taste like metal to me, even after going through tank after yeah. tank after tank and different coils and all that. Oh, well, my friend, my friend Jacob, the drummer for the band, man, he, he doesn't really like vape exclusively, he just kind of like, he bought an Ego AIO just to like, because he wanted to see what it was like, and he, he had me hit his, and I didn't really think it tasted like metal. I mean, obviously, it's a way. It's a much duller flavor from being like used to dripping and stuff like that. But I don't really think it tasted like metal. The I can't shake this taste on this tank or my Tron. But tank. like, yeah, you're you're the expert on the on those kind of stuff because you've actually vaped all their stuff. But I've I've never actually had like a uh, like Weird. starter kit or anything from them at all. It is great. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I love Joytech. I think they're killing it. But for me, this tastes like a strange metal. But I, I just don't know. I wonder if it, maybe Steve it's Steve in the back of this says that he thinks that Joytech just can't make coil heads. Maybe they're yeah, great at hardware and can't make coil heads. I feel like that's what people usually have problems with with like with tanks and stuff. If they're not rebuildable and stuff, I feel like people always seem to have problems with coil heads. Like I feel like that's like why tanks leak sometimes and that's why they taste weird. Like I've heard of people saying that like coil heads taste like rubber bands and stuff like that and it's like Yeah. I mean they're <laughs> they're ma much. they're mass produced, so that's the problem. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because they're so uneven, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah, too many coil heads just being made at, at once. Yeah, and it's like when I had my TFV4 Mini, I would go buy a coil, and then I would fucking have to go back and buy another coil, because there'd be some weird thing with the seal, and it would just leak. And I'd go get another yeah. coil, and then it yeah. wouldn't leak. And it's and like... I remember so many times... It's not good for the consumer. Like, the consumer should not have to go buy seven coils before it finally works. And I remember so many times having trouble with uh with my coils and you know i think that really the greatest thing these days is something like the avocado you know or the limitless because i truly think that somebody who is who is starting out building or who has a clear miser tank and doesn't want to buy coils anymore gets an avocado you're finished it's extremely easy to build on and offers 99.9 yeah, like percent of the taste of a dripper and is l not very leaky. They're a little bit messy, but not like a dripper. But how, how many how many coil heads do you think you would go through in a week if you were just strictly vaping like a sub ohm tank? Oh, one. I feel like I would go through like yeah, one or two. But I boil mine. Like that that like ten dollars that you spend on those two coils. That's fucking a bag of cotton and a fucking spool of wire. That's gonna last you for like. I still have the same fucking the very first roll of wire I ever bought. I still have it. Yeah, so the economy of building your own coils and stuff yeah. is really great. Yeah, my coils that I build for the Limitless and the Avocado and all that last forever. Even this Griffin 25. I think that's the reason why this RTA market has a lot of a lot of people in it. A lot of people buying RTAs like this. That yeah, because they like tanks, the but they don't want to. They don't want to fucking spend all that money on coil heads and have them, like you said, taste like metal or taste like yeah. rubber bands or leak or anything like that. And it's like, and inside, at the end of the day, and inside this market, build. you have this. All this variation of people who just make all these like there's just all this one-upmanship you know like the freaking tfv8 like what the hell like i don't care about that and uh, i care about flavor with these big tanks we're already in sub ohming land right we're already yeah. in cloud land we want good flavor with it for sure that's why i just stick to dripping because i mean i don't want to buy a tank and have it not taste good but i know if i buy a dripper i'll probably be i'll probably be uh happy with it Oh, I've got some that don't taste so good. Uh, you know what my pleasant surprise was this year was that the Chameleon had such good flavor because that's such a fun little tank. I actually use that thing all the time and it changes colors. So <laughs> it's kind of fun that uh, right. the guys at Hot Sig uh, did not screw up the flavor. They did not. It's, it's, it's good. And the walls are about the same thickness as the ones in the Limitless, in case you're wondering, Luke. Um, the, but the Limitless is firmer, so it's made of steel. I think theirs is made of zinc or something. Or I don't know. I find that like RDAs with like limited airflow are usually the most flavorful oh yeah totally like this dot mine i got two little holes for airflow flavor for days and like something like the troll v2 is just like airflow all over the place and it's like it just kind of tastes like nothing oh yeah it's a complete myth that big clouds are big flavor no that's we just need to clarify that for the viewers that clouds and flavor are opposites i mean and that's why clouds like are air yeah and that's why like most like atomizers that you see people like like the dot mod and like the tugboat and stuff there's not a shit ton of airflow and that's for a reason they want they want you to be able to taste your juice 
Yeah, and even the goon and the twisted messes have real, yeah. can restrict the airflow real nicely. And the and the twisted me and I'm sorry, the twist, uh, the limitless RTDA. Owen Owen Ginter asked, "What part of Ohio I'm from?" I'm from Toledo, Owen. Toledo, Ohio, good old Lake Erie area. That's wonderful. Yeah, Mark uh, Dean said he's just got the Tornado Nano. And the pre-made coils are like the ones you build yourself. Oh, yeah? Tornado Nano, huh? Like, do you have to, like, build, like, a spiral, like, weird, like, coil head or something? I don't know. I don't know. Well, the, yeah, I'm not sure. I've heard like, of it. But... The moonshot was kind of the opposite. It had, like, a deck that you were basically building a giant pre-made coil yourself. That's why it works That so thing well. uh, looked like it was hell with, like, the moving... The moving base and stuff. I don't know. It was. It's weird, but I, I. It's weird, but why? You know, I've thought about this a lot, because people ask me a lot. But why don't I hate that as much as I hate the theorem? For example, <laughs> I don't right? know. That's a really good question. Like why? Because that thing does spin around and do all this weird shit. Um, and I think it's because, quite simply, the overall use of it, even though that one thing is lame, and you do that once you figure out how to how to work it, it kind of gets okay. And it's not that irritating. But what's irritating about the theorem is shit that you have to do all the time, constantly. Right. And so it's like, ooh. And the theorem breaks when you use it. And that's never the case with the moonshot. The moonshot doesn't break because you use it wrong. Or you just have a theorem? Use it right. Huh? Do you have a theorem? Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. That's my highest viewed video. <laughs> that episode, not the review for not the theorem. Not thrown it in the bin. Yeah, the, the yeah, I've, like, the I feel like so I've long. missed so many of the shows since, since like I work like first shift. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll you've see um, seen it, Juicy. If you go look for uh, Robert Ellis, <clears throat> he hated the theorem so much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he put a uh, put a video up on YouTube of him smashing it in a voice. <laughs> oh nice, good idea. <laughs> good idea. Yeah, but I, I, I actually. <laughs> I actually give it something worse than hate, and that is kind of like a sort of like reluctant, mediocre ambivalence. Because, you know... It's just like a, I feel like it's just like a big piece of glass that you like sit a coil and cotton inside with it's, a pool of juice. It's really, it's really beautiful, and it is the coolest looking RTA. And what about the, what about the notch coil? I mean, I'd never, I've never Garbage. tried one, but yeah, I've heard like terrible things. If you vape it 25 or 30 watts all the time, it's actually really great. But, but I don't. Bad, I mean. And so it's garbage. I couldn't. I, couldn't I don't think I would vape a dripping tank at fucking thirty watts. I mean, I, I I would never. That's the reason I. And again, I underscore that the avocado and the limitless are near perfect, both of them. I've heard a lot of good things about the limitless. Some I've heard people mixed, think mixed reviews on the avocado, but good things on the limitless. That's weird because they're almost absolutely identical. I mean, I, I watch a lot of Grim Green's videos, and he absolutely yeah. fucking did the avocado. Yeah. Like I guess he's like, he's like he hated it. I think that's like one of the only. Why? Like Fabe and Fagan too said he hated the avocado. Why? I don't care why. Let me tell you. That's I don't know. Not what you I know think. How, some people it's just subjective, and some people are finicky about certain things. The thing is, I bought every single one of these recent RDTAs: the Fodi, the Hayes, the Vogo that nobody else has, both avocados, the Limitless, the Theorem, all of those, and. The, the the avocado and the limitless rise to the top on all of the criteria of what makes these good and bad. And it's solving problems that make them bad, like extreme spitback, which is characteristic of the design, not of any flaw, and um, some messiness and difficulty in filling and all that. So, I mean, and flavor. You know, they all have good characteristic flavor, but those two fly to the top of good flavor and easy to use. You pop off the top, throw in any build, you know, go to the trouble to learn how to wick it. And it's not like you learn how to wick it and it's always hard like it is on the moonshot. You learn how to wick it one time by watching any video I've made. I've done like five of them and then you're done. And what's funny is that now that like 10 months has passed or something or eight months, it's, what is today? This is June, right? So it's been like eight months. Now I'm starting to see every single person is wicking them like I wick them. All I mean, that's the thing with, already, with like rebuildable tanks is that, yeah, you got to wick it right. Well, so far, it, the only... it makes me giggle because they clearly 
you know, I, I'm not a super genius or anything, but I've been doing it the same exact way all the time. And everyone was putting in those long Goldilocks wicks before and talking about going to the bottom and all that. And even now they still suggest, you know, more. Yeah, working. that's the thing with the theorem. I feel like it's just like people put so much cotton in it that I'm just like. It's a nightmare. Huh? It's, I feel like this goes against everything I know. It's the worst of dry hits. <laughs> yeah. Um, Michaela was saying, uh, apparently Matt from Suck My Mod have said they're working on a V2 of the theorem. Oh, it's already been done. It's called the Limitless. <laughs> I'm dead serious. That's what the Limitless is. Is, a, is the, is the thing like, about the theorem that would have worked, but better. But why release a product and then have everyone bash it and then release a V2 a month later? I feel like that's what everybody does. Yeah, it's because they don't want to. They don't want to spend two months of the product not being on the sale R&D, to test like, it. Yeah, yeah they, they, because quite simply, they make more money letting it fail than they do right. not letting yeah. it fail. Because so much hype builds around a product, everyone buys it and then it fucking disappears. Yeah, yeah. Which was my which was my experience with the uh, tsunami. Like so much hype about it. Oh, it's like the cheap version of the Kennedy. Blah blah. blah and I get it. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, <clears throat> Tony Tony Dixon said he's he's had an issue with grub screws on the limitless. I've had no issues. I'm not sure about you, Juicy. Yeah, I've had issues. I have like the only RTA I'm using right now is the Serpent. It's real, it's real simple. I like it, but the fucking grub screws, man. It's like I put, I get it out of the box, put one build in it. It's like I try to get my screws tight. Yep, first change time. of the grub screws. Yep. Me too. I've always had a problem with that with the Tofo stuff, and you know, I'm not. Never I'm not, had a problem back that with my Lush, but the Serpent is like. I wish I could show you the deck on it because it's like the posts, the post screws just kind of like clamp the wire to like the side, but there's no like it's not a hole. It's just open at the top. So yeah, I'm not like I'm not like backtracking on my love for Watofo, but every Watofo RTA or RDA rather that I've had, I've had a problem with the grub screws. And yeah, it's just one of those things. And you know who I never have problems with grub screws with? Geek Vape. Yeah, because they have never. The, it's hardened. Yeah, never have a problem with Geek Vape. Always like, have a problem. I with like the Phillips head vape. and like the flat head. I think that's the way to go. Um, it's not about the heads. It's about the treatment of the shafts. And you know, you can pick any kind of head you want. But if, <laughs> this is sounding really cool now. <laughs> it doesn't sound like sex at all, Luke. <laughs> Uh, but for some reason, the people at Limitless and iJoy, they haven't nailed it either. Yeah. But then again, you know, that's why they sell replacements. And Tom Pavlou, our friend of the show, always points out that you can always just order two, two and a half, and three, and maybe three and a half if you get a kit. And those are your yeah. screw sizes for all RTA, RDAs. Yeah. Number two, and three, three and a half, and four. Owen, <laughs> Owen saying he built his uh, tsunami <laughs> and dissembled it in an hour later and put it back in the box. <laughs> For good reason. Oh, and mail that to me so I can share in your in your pity. <laughs> and I waited so I, I waited so long for it. Oh, I remember. And you sent me all these messages after you got it too. Like, God damn it, get a fucking Sub Zero. Forget about that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Uh, apparently, Foofy has had issues with grub screws on the Avocado Twenty Two. Really? That sucks. Well, then I, of course, that has been my experience. But you know what? No one's fucking immune. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you try to get your, you try to get your stuff tight, and it's just mm-hmm. yeah. oh, it Owen, drives me crazy. <clears throat> Owen said uh, that Foofy is stronger than the Hulk. That might be true. You know, actually, <laughs> maybe that has something to do with it because I'm not gonna lie. I, whenever I do my builds, I'm like, and the, you know, I'm not doing it on purpose, but I tend to crank things. Yeah, so same. Maybe we I wanted. To, I don't want to have to go back and have it not fire right. Yeah. Do we need? Yeah, exactly. And we all know that when you when you're setting it. It only takes 10 times to start building to get this. That every single time you go back and you didn't tighten them enough, right? Or you're jiggling it and it came loose every single time. So, of course, we go back and tighten them all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, even um, fixed in focus has also had issues with the Avocado 22. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So there you go. So fuck everybody who puts in shitty grub screws. Although I gotta say, I think I feel like the quality s- control probably isn't that good on the grub screws. Well, I think probably yeah. a better thing to do would be to include. I don't mind if grub screws fail as long as the posts are machined correctly and the posts are hardened. So maybe the thing to do is to put in ten times as many freaking grub screws. 
Yeah. You know, why don't they just give us more grub screws if they know they're going to fail? Yeah, give them. me like 20 grub screws. Yeah, why not? Yeah. What does that cost them? Can, less than yeah, cost. exactly. If I can change it every day, then whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and so Steve did too. So everybody had problems with their grubs in their Avocado 22. So there you go. That's all. So nobody yeah. is immune to this, yeah. you creepy manufacturer. Man, even on the even on like the more expensive, like I had my my Petri version one point five, and my uh, post ended up spinning and like wobbling on it. I mean, it tightened down, but right. and when I got my goon, uh, my ex girlfriend had bought one for me and her, and I built on hers right out of the right out of the package, and the fucking the post was moving. Like, you can't fucking send people shit, like, when it's already flawed right out of the box, you know? But you had to Which, tighten down, right? Or was it Well, yeah, I did, but it still ended up moving later. But it wasn't broken. Oh, but it's, it did? Because mine's never worked itself loose. I've taken mine completely apart, though, and changed all yeah, the I mean, O-rings. Like, I know the screw on the bottom, you just tighten it, and it's all good, but it's, like, it still, still moved a little bit. Right on. Yeah, Which, I totally, like, in order to clean the... solid. Another reason why I find my copper one inconvenient is that to clean it... I have to take out absolutely every single O-ring and stuff. And if you've tried to take out the O-ring that holds in the Kennedy tip on that, have you uh, done that? It's not easy to get I, that out. I haven't tried, but I imagine it's pretty tight. Well, yeah, and it's not just tight. It's an inverted O-ring. So yeah, inside it. Yeah. So it's like, how do you get it back in? Y'all can't see this, but I'm flashing the camera. But it's that O-ring right there I'm talking about. I have to take that O-ring out, and I have to take the screw out of the bottom and take its O-ring out. And the reason is because I clean this with acetone. And acetone will annihilate any plastic it touches. In not instantly, but you'll know soon. As you try to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like, where's my O-ring? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> Paul, Paul also said it's not just the screws, it's the cheap drivers as well. The Allen keys they put in there are just cheap, nasty. That's true, yeah. not the correct size Crap. sometimes. Sometimes it's all sharpened up. I have a dream of buying myself a really nice set of Allen keys, just like my little Stanley screwdriver set. Would that be nice? mm -hmm. Do you guys have something like that? I do not. I've got, I've got a nice <clears throat> one that I always keep in my work bag for if I ever need Allen keys, which has got a, a screwdrivers on it and Allen keys. And I usually tend to use them if, if one of them were fit. I tend to use that than their silly Allen keys they give you. Yeah, I have like nice. the little like eyeglass screwdriver yeah. for that. But even that sometimes doesn't work. Yeah, I should just probably get off my butt and go buy three. You only need three, two, two or four. Go to like, maybe. go to like Harbor Freight or something. Yeah. Two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Yeah, you'll yeah. be able to get like a like a whole set of eyeglass screwdrivers for like five bucks. In fact, and I, would... I I use them to like like the three millimeter ones. I use them to like push my coils around because they get in there nice. Oh yeah, I've got the screwdriver set. They're killer. I mean, just the Allen key sets, and I have a million Allen keys. I just need the really nice ones with the handles that twist like the eye like us eyeglasses thing. I just yeah. came back from Harbor Freight a couple of months ago, and I bought a new set of uh, clippers and all this stuff. The clippers were terrible, and I threw them away. The, my, my clippers that I already have are amazing. They cost me like $45. They're great. But what was great, though, is that it came with blunt nose uh, pliers that curved, uh, and it was, the whole set was like $7. Crimpless pliers? What's that? The crimpless pliers. They don't have yeah, like the... Exactly. Yeah. They don't have any of the knurling. I just have my uh, great. oil master kit. I don't really use the pliers, though. I do. I use the pliers quite a bit for my... I feel like a little scientist. I'm all, hey. Because <laughs> I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to do what James Reeves tells me to do and, and take some of his examples of how to use the pliers to bend the, co the leads the correct way. I'm trying, I'm trying to make my... I'm trying to slowly learn how to make my builds look better and perform better by making them more consistent. You know what I mean? It's not easy. It's easy to throw builds in and wrestle them into shape. And it's not easy to plan things to be th this size or that size and get them exactly where you want. I honestly, like, this is going to make me sound probably pretty bad, but I still just use my uh, my coil jig. <laughs> I just like it because the coil is, like, perfect every time. And oh, yeah. I don't, mean the, fast. I don't mean the inside diameter. I'm talking about all the leads everywhere. The jig doesn't yeah, make yeah. any leads for you or anything like that. All it does is give you a good coil. Of course I use mine. Anybody who doesn't use a coil jig, by the way, you should get one, you know, unless you're just dead yeah. set on a screwdriver or whatever. But I love being able to say... Hey, Sean, this is a 2.5 millimeter inside diameter. And then he yeah, knows exactly. exactly. Yeah, right? Like, don't you like numbers that describe actual physical things? I really like that. Hey. Right, yeah, it says this is 3 millimeter. Now I built a coil. I know it's 3 millimeter. And I can count every wrap while I'm, while right. I'm wrapping it. 
put them both on there, trim them out. You know, I used the Phil yep. Vasardo technique of throwing on two extra wraps and pulling them out. I love that. He's easy. I to uh, I like, you know, you like you put the wire in and then it sticks out the hole at the end after the coil's done. I cut it right flush to the coil jig and then it fits in the RDA, perfect every Pretty time. Pretty good. That's good. It's like cut to length. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but it works. That's killer. So right now you're you're vaping on your new Petri. Yes. And my and my dot mod that you happen to have in your hand that I'm stealing from you mentally. <laughs> your mini game. And I just I love those things. And I love the blue. I love those powder colors too. They just look so cool. Yeah, this one's black. I had yeah. the red like shiny finish in the version one. I liked it. I like this black one though, honestly. The black looks killer with that petri and the gold top. That looks super cool. Yeah, the purple tip. Yeah. And I have this uh the cloud app for it. To like switch it up. Oh sweet. Go down. With like the the clear tip. Oh yeah, that looks killer. Yeah, it looks pretty sick on there too. Switch it up sometimes. I got like a bunch of tips for it. James I sent it up me every time uh, I take a picture of it. James Reeve sent me a dot mod tip. In the mail recently. They're really nice. I honestly like they're my favorite tips. I have one on my serpent. I have one on my uh my troll V2. I don't know, I just like the mouthfeel. There's two that I love the most, and it's my dot mod drip tip and my DHD drip tip. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't had the pleasure of getting like any really nice drip tips because I want to get one for my goon. Oh yeah. But I just haven't been vaping it, so oh, I just yeah. don't they look orange. so they look so sick. Yeah, like that looks so cool. <coughs> matchy matchy red and white today. That's a smart guy. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's these and what I really like about the goon is that it uses the Kennedy size tips. So that's so smart. Yeah. You know, that's so smart. My uh when my ex girlfriend she got one for it and it looks fucking sweet. <clears throat> yeah. Tony Dixon said, I'm not sure what the actual hole is on the coil jig, but he's having to hand wrap his coils because he's using a bigger gauge. And won't oh, fit in the hole. Yeah, I could wa yeah, bigger than it'll fit through the hole. That happens to me too. I'm, I'm waiting sure on what. some uh, some of those new pre built coils from Coil Master. Hopefully they're good. Because yeah, I yeah. I don't know, I've been wanting to vape some Clapton for a long time because I ran out of Clapton wire and I can do <gasps> regular round wire. Oh my god. So I'm waiting, but it's in China still, so yeah, Do you know what the um do you know what the gauge is, do you see that the Cool jig lets you go up to. Yeah, you know, I, that's funny you ask because I was just looking on my desk to pick the thing up and it looks look. Like three five. Let me. I can. I can sort of. My, I'll I look, can sort of I caliper my, it, but the caliper right here. I can sort of caliper it, but the problem is that the caliper is. It's not a. And I, uh, round I think you can hole. get twenty two gauge in there. It goes up. I know you can get twenty two gauge in it. Oh, you're talking about the actual like hole for it. Yeah, the diameter. Yeah. Of the hole. The thickness of the why you I'd can get say in the probably hole. like maybe twenty gauge. If I that. know you can get twenty two, and yeah, I'm not sure about twenty, but yeah, twenty two goes in fine. And I've put Clapton wire through it before too, so too. it fits pretty thick wire. Yeah, in fact, I've put fused you can build Claptons. a coil up to four millimeters in diameter. Yeah, I've put fused Claptons in here. Yeah, yeah Tony I... said he's using twenty gauge. It doesn't look like it'll fit, but it will. He's not getting it in there. Hey, there's James Reeves. We were just, his ears must be burning. <laughs> we're just talking about you, buddy. Because we were talking about drip tips. James, James Reeves is kind of a drip tip connoisseur <laughs> yeah. of sorts. I want to be, but so far I only have a bunch of that drip tips. Yeah. And it, that was funny because he actually sent me these two because I was complaining. I was like, I've got 500 drip tips, but they're all clones or crap. Or I've got like three good drip tips and I broke you know, one of my favorites. He was like, I got you. And he sent me... I know, me... I got lucky and I have like this whole <laughs> like box of them. So, like, every time I take a picture of it, I can like switch it all up. Yeah, it's perfect. I've started keeping all my drip tips in a little Japanese ceramic plate. My desk. Yeah, I've got all mine in my toolbox. I've got, yeah. oh, God knows how many, 25 drip I tips probably. This. I have a really cool drip tip that the inside of it is so small that I can't use it. Oh, I don't like that, yeah. You know what I'm really proud of myself is that I stuck the 510 adapter for the for the Griffin 25 inside my Limitless, and so now I can use my DHD drip tip or whatever I want on my Limitless. Mental note uh, there, Luke. We know how much Juicy loves this, the best drip tip you can ever buy. I oh, prefer yeah. drip tips. I want that like so bad. 
<laughs> I want that in a Guardian 3 really badly, actually. Yeah. And I want to think of some way to make a show where I like sit in an armchair and with an ascot and be like, Hello, I'm Juicy Jones. It's time for me to talk to you about... You gotta get the smock pipe. Yeah, yeah, that's the Guardian. Yeah. That, that new one they've just brought out looks quite nice. The sub ohm kit. Mm. Oh, someone's asked me what I think about the Griffin 25. And, uh, you know, so far so good. I've had, what if I had this like four days? <coughs> I opened it on Monday or Tuesday. <coughs> um, I mean, so far so good. I, I It reminds me, it's kind of like a 300 watt mod. You know, like to me, there's like an arms race for clouds on these RTAs that's a little bit ridiculous. And this and the Aromizer Supreme and all the other ones are kind of getting there. Like this thing, even about on my. Minutes. With this build I put in here is enough to for me if I vape it all the way open a lot I'll get sick. So <laughs> I'm like wow, but the way I like it is with the airflow relatively closed. It's good. But I, I like this better than I thought I would. I'm gonna tell you I, I fully expected to hate this tank and it's grown on me. I love when that happens. Apparently, Yeti's uncle makes the best quills in the world too. <coughs> I don't. I want to know that. I have yet to try out some of this like really, really hand built coils. I've always, I've only ever had like the pre builds from like Watofo or like now I'm gonna try the ones from Coil Master. Or, like, pre oh, you need to get some from some people. Flaps and wire off of eBay or something. Yeah, I know. I need to just get like some crazy <laughs> coils. Where I reach like... out to people on Instagram who make coils, or even here in the audience. I know. Th I know that uh, Yeti makes coils. I know that James makes coils, although he's really busy. I know that uh, vaping Micra makes coils, and he's really super cool. I've always wanted to like try out some, but like the only ones I've ever seen are like thirty dollars for two coils, or like something crazy like that. Which is like, no. I realize like, the manpower that goes into it, but it's like, well, yeah. the only ones that are that expensive are like Squidudes. Yeah, nobody yeah. else charges that much. Like for example, I got five or six sets of coils from Travis at Overdose Vapes for I think twenty dollars shipped. Damn. And I still haven't used them all. That's a really good deal. And, you um, opened my eyes to that. So it's, it's, I mean, look around Facebook and start posting because you can find them. They're all over. And some I'll check that out them. once I uh, get back to work. Oh, and B-Man Vapes. Um, B-Man Vapes makes coils. And, um, other people, too. I, I'm sorry if I can't remember you. I, mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that do it. It's just, like, so hard to find sometimes. And Fix and Focus is asking what we think about Tiger coils. Yeah, I think they're okay. They're kind of spitty. Never, I don't think I've ever tried them. They're, they're the kind with the... That's the twisted flat wire around the okay. cores. Wire. Never had the player. Yeah, but he charges almost nothing. So, there you go. Yeah, the Tiger coils. You don't you get the pre-built ones for the Arctic? I think it's the Arctic V8. I think I have some pre-built Tiger coils from Motofo. But I never used them because they... Fire and temp control. Well, but if they're made of stainless steel, oh, are they nickel? I don't know. If they're stainless steel, you're fine. No, these are Caterpillar Clapton. But they're they so don't say what kind of metal, huh? Sure don't. Of course not. Fire them on, on Anthol. I'm sure they're fine. <clears throat> Even Matopo isn't stupid enough to sell a nickel coil like that. <laughs> Yeah, besides, I can tell you those aren't nickel, because if you see any, you'll know if they're nickel or not, because if you yeah, put those on your thing, and they register at .002, they're nickel. Right, Luke? Point or like .04? It's like, what? .45 ohms per foil. Yeah, if they're half yeah. ohm, they can't all. Yeah, they'll be comp full. Yeah. yeah, my buddy put, I gave him a tube of these, and he, uh, he put them in his, in his RDA, and he was like, dude, these are fire and temp control. I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> that doesn't seem. That seems weird. Was he? He might have been on stainless steel. For all we know, they are stainless steel. Although I think we would see more wraps, wouldn't we? I mean, yeah, half of stainless steel is a lot. Of wraps. I feel like you so, never know yeah. with like Chinese made wire. Well, the way you know is you read the resistance. I mean, it, they they literally cannot be stainless. Yeah, it wouldn't be. be uh, it wouldn't wire. be like nickel or anything if it's or temp control if it's not like really really low. Yeah, they can't. They have to be. And I mean, like, it's like nichrome or something. Well, even nichrome is far higher than titanium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but because you can look at the actual numbered curves, but if they fire on temperature control, I I would be concerned. If they're stainless steel, it might be. It, the thing is, there's different temperature control. I've never modes. tried to build them on my own mod, so maybe I'll try to do that and then. 
be surprised when they're actually like just firing in regular wattage mode because he has a snow wolf and snow wolves can be weird oh. mode control. Oh, I thought you said he had a real mod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Snow wolf was like my my second ever mod, which is like oh, that's cool. I mean, I could go back and do it again. I probably wouldn't have bought it. That's a good question. What mod would you, you guys in the audience, what mod would you not buy again that you've already bought? What about you, Luke? Uh, to be honest, everything. Um, oh, I don't well, think there is really, I don't <laughs> think there is really anything that I've, that I've bought that I wouldn't buy again, except from the DNA 200, but then that is just because of the batteries and being the way you ch have to charge them and you can't swap them out. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Let me think. I, I th oh, you know what? I think, hmm. Okay, wouldn't buy again because I, I didn't need it, or wouldn't buy again because it's crap. I should clarify, right? So, <laughs> wouldn't buy again because you just think it's just not any good. Because I've got a list, a short list of stuff that I didn't really need or whatever that is fine. The only thing I wouldn't yeah. buy because I like really just don't think it was good is the tsunami. <laughs> Other than that, like I wouldn't have bought my hexome because right. I just didn't end up using it. I wouldn't have bought my snow wolf because there's better things for the money. I spent one hundred and thirty dollars on that thing at the vape shop. Like what? Right. Yeah, actually, I'm actually looking at getting another hexone, possibly. <clears throat> and it's a good mod. I just never like. It just I never ended up reaching for it all the time. Don't forget, just, Luke, to reach out and let's theory. call Louis, Louis, and see about getting you a new yeah. mod instead, because you're not going to save money with another hexone. I did see. Um, he posted up a picture the other day, which had some really crazy engraving on it. Well, which that's that really guy. Cool. That's that guy. He charges uh, like 500 bucks just to do that engraving. Like, that's the famous yeah. guy who does those crazy engravings. Lewis's engravings are, are cool, but they're not that fancy. Man, that was that dude that you and I saw. Remember that mod that uh, Big Lou had and you and I flipped out last year? It was around Christmas. It was his castigator or whatever. <clears throat> The big Lou posted, and I was like, "Oh my God, look at that engraving!" And he had given it to that same guy. Yeah, some people do some really crazy, cool stuff. Yeah, I just mean that's that particular guy is famous for doing that shit right there. He does it all by hand. Uh, I would love yeah. to have one of those, but he said it was going to look even better. I saw that too on Lewis's page. God, those are great. Yeah. I want a new, I want a new Nuve mod because uh, I want one with a new door, with a notch in it, and with a centered five, centered sunken five ten. Now they're nigh perfect. Whatever nigh means. Nearly is nigh means. You yeah. shouldn't know what that means, shouldn't you, Luke? Aren't I've never really like seen that? these new Vay mods. They're pretty crazy. Those engravings are nuts. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. super cool. Apparently things are going great. Yeah, I would definitely probably pick that over a hex one. It just kind of looks cool. They all have like different like normal engravings on them. <laughs> Rhonda McGee called the noisy cricket the cheese grater mod. <laughs> I just gave mine away, actually. <laughs> I've, I haven't heard that one yet. We've heard a lot of funny criticisms of the noisy cricket. No, I had no idea why they named it that until my friend who doesn't even vape was like, "Oh, the noisy cricket, the gun from uh, Men in Black." I was like, "Oh, <laughs> damn!" <laughs> it kind of does look like it too. I know, right? Yeah, which one wouldn't I buy again? I probably wouldn't have ever bought the tugboat clone from Fast Tech. <gasps> I love that thing. Actually, I don't think I'd ever get rid of it. But remember, yours, it. yours is the correct one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine has a MOSFET. Yeah. In a moment of weakness, I paid a lot of money for this. This is a tugboat V1 mech mod. And then this V1. is the V2 RDA. And... I paid like 200 bucks for this. Nice. <laughs> and I don't ever use it. It literally just sits on my shelf. Is that the is that the V1 or the V2? The mod is the V1 and I the thought the V1 had it. holes on the bottom. Uh, I don't, I don't think this is this is the V1 cuz it's not copper. Uh, I've got the V2. I absolutely love the V2. I'm just not really a mech mod kind of guy and I mean the RDA is cool but I just like paid way too much money for it, and I don't even use it. The able, I actually polished it up last night as well. Oh, it looks really good. <laughs> Look how good it looks. Now. I also have 
this that I'll probably never vape. The Petri mod from Dot Mod. Oh yeah. It's really nice looking, but it's gonna be like a relic. If you used uh, it. Really. Yeah, I'm just gonna kinda like let it sit in the box and then like maybe it'll become a collector's item one day. I'm trying to decide whether I want to keep my rig V2 that I want or if I want to trade it away for another DNA 200 or something. I don't know. Mechs to me are cool, but it's just like they die so fast. Yeah, it's not something. <clears throat> mechs are cool. I like mechs as well, but they're not, not something you can use all day long because they just don't last just long enough. Like at the end of the day, I get a better vape from a regulated mod. Yeah. But so that's just my personal opinion. I chalk that up for... I feel that way, but I think I chalk it up to my own laziness. Yeah, and the <laughs> ramp up too is like I like just. Well, but, you got to build right, so you got to build yeah, point oh eight yeah. to one. And I just like one. yeah, I'm like a lazy builder. I just want to throw some coils and have it work the way it works, and not like have to like tailor my build to. I don't know. Yeah. It's just not worth it for the battery life for me. Yeah, I can usually get about four hours out of my able, but that is running at point one. Yeah. Like, this build here is like a point one seven that I have on the Twisted Messes. And it's got almost no ramp-up time. It's good. It's Clapton's. But, you know, I my problem is that I'm so lazy, I just don't like pressing this fucking button and not having a display. Exactly. Like, mm. yeah. I don't have enough batteries to save mech mods. <laughs> oh, maybe so. I guess I don't have that much of a problem with that because I have a lot of batteries, so that is an issue. Like if you I have a lot of batteries, but I'm, like, weird. And, like, if they have been in a... Like, dual 18650 mod, that's just what they're going to be used for forever. I have two batteries that I use for, like, single stuff. Like, I have one that's in my uh, my 510 tab, and then I have just one that, if I ever get a single 18650 mod, it's there for it. <laughs> yeah, and with the mech mods, too, once you get a series box, you got to watch out for one battery dying early and then swapping them. And yeah. Like, when I had my Noisy yeah. Cricket, I bought two batteries specifically for my Noisy Cricket, and I just used those. But now I gave that to my buddy, so two extra batteries. Yeah. I don't know if you've um, seen it on your coil tab. Um, <clears throat> when you put a fully charged battery in it, what sort of voltage are you getting from your coil tab? Um... The ramp up time on it is pretty slow. I've actually vaped it. <clears throat> yeah, because when I have five ten tab, usually when I put a fully charged battery in it, I'm only getting a maximum volts of three point eight. Yeah, it's about where it kind of like cuts it off at three point eight. I yeah, think. They but don't... if you plug it, if you plug it into the mains without a battery, you get about four point one. Ooh, is that the thing with, Is that the thing with like the fucking like wire or whatever? Yeah, the power adapter. Yeah. So if you just plug it through USB without a battery and you actually get better voltage out of it running it off the mains. I don't use it that found. often. Huh. But it's actually a pretty cool thing. I like it. It's like nice to build on because it's like a big surface. It's big and flat. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and people in chat chime in with all kinds of different opinions. Some people love their Macs. Some people like screens. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one reason I like vaping is that there's something for everybody in there. Yeah, like a lot of people like mech mods and like it's just like a lot of people like tanks, and a lot of people like mouth to lung, and some people like direct lung. But Ooh, did you guys see yesterday? Uh, Mark Fagan was at the Miami show, then some guy's mech exploded right in his face in front of him. Holy shit! Nope. See, and yeah. it's like I'm afraid to even put a mech in my pocket. Well, yeah, you know? the way to, the way to not be afraid of you should be a little afraid because it helps you be informed. But what people exactly. don't what people don't realize is that you have to replace your batteries. Yeah. And that guy had a bad battery, I'm sure. I don't know what happened. I haven't got the details. But I suspect he had a bad battery and just didn't know it. All of us probably have a battery that is on the verge or whatever. But that's why I hit the voltimeter on mine and I look at the rate they charge and the rate they discharge a lot because I'm paranoid. I don't right. want to get blown up on. wants to blow up? I was actually at a vape shop, uh, the local vape shop here, Vape Super Center, like a couple of months ago. And a guy came in there and he was like, he had he had a mech. And on top of his mech, he had... Because he wanted it to look good, right? So he has a mech, and he's got a fucking, like, TFV4 on oh top. Oh, my God. He, he <laughs> opens up his mod and oh looks inside, and his the fucking top of his battery was, like, pushed in. Dented. Yeah. I'm screwing it down. Yeah. Right? With a 510. Yeah. Oh, my God. And she was like, I'm not going to let you leave with that battery. Like, you have to buy another <laughs> battery. Yeah. I know. She was like... Yeah. Like, dude, how are you? And she was, like, they're trying to, like, get another mech. Like, oh, fuck, man. It's like, those are the kind of people that, like, 
are so uninformed that they just like that's the guy that's going to be on the news next like oh it's terrifying uh, yeah like and can that even be a good vape yeah it could <laughs> i mean he's just cranking it too hard i mean it could be i, don't know, I feel like uh, it's a good question actually could it be? i mean is, it it might good, not. is a tank on a mech mod a good vape i'll never know because i don't want to blow up Oh well, if it's an RT, if if it's hybrid safe and it's rebuildable, this fine. was a TFV four though. Yeah, no, you have, hybrid safe. <clears throat> no, you have to be careful. I don't think. I think there is one coming out, but I don't think any <clears throat> of the recent sub tanks are actually hybrid safe because none of them have adjustable pins. They're all. The Which I feel like tents. that's a good thing. Like all anything that can go on a mod should be hybrid safe for the fact that people who are uninformed are going to try to put it on a mech that their friend gave them to save money. And then if it's, if they're all hybrid safe all across the board, then everything. I mean, I've got my avocado and limitless on hybrid mods. Yeah. But the limitless, the limitless is okay. Yeah. And I have my Griffin 25 on my, on my, uh, new bay. But would you buy a crown tank and throw it on there? (laughs) <laughs> that's nothing. The problem with that is not the 510. The problem with that is the fact that the coils that are in the crown are yeah. factory coils, and you can't yeah. guarantee that that resistance, that metal, is all right. If you were building exactly. it yourself, and the five and the 510 were okay, then yes, I would. Yeah. But if I yeah, that's why I would trust myself, something like I would trust the Griffin or the Limitless or something like that because you build the coil, you know exactly yeah. what's happening. But with a coil head, they're also. Yeah, the under the underscore here is that you must. Ne- oh, and I'm looking at the crown, and I would never put this on a hybrid mod because the 510 <laughs> is not safe. But the two oh, no. things are important. One, the 510 extends. To, this is just for the audience here. That the 510 is long enough and extends past the bottom so that there's enough clearance, and the crown is not enough. It needs to be half a millimeter minimum. Half yeah, a millimeter right. minimum. That is the, the RDA number. that I would recommend safest for any mech mod is the Aeolus because the 510 sticks out like an inch. Well, there, I mean, there's no, there's no safest. It's either safe or it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, look at how far that comes down. Any RDA that, that has a half, that's one millimeter. Any RDA that has a half a millimeter or more is hybrid safe. Yeah. And that's enough for almost all of the, of the components we use. But you have to check for yourself. Like, here's my twisted messes, and it's poking out of the bottom of this thing about half a millimeter. So that's perfectly fine. And yeah. I look, I always look the theorem. I used the theorem in my hybrid mod because I looked at it quite closely and the 510 sticks out. It has a good insulator. And yeah, I definitely with uh, never what a tank James, with coils. Yeah, James said uh, in chat, no tank on a mech mod, especially a hybrid mech mod. I'll, I'll just, that's the way I, I you do it. I never roll. <clears throat> I never put a tank on a hybrid mech mod, the same as I don't put mods in my pockets. Now that people see you and they just look at you in fear. They're just waiting for you to yeah. explode. <clears throat> Pretty much. If you don't understand your 510 length and you don't yeah. understand the circuit that it's creating, then yeah. you know you have to make sure that you know what hardware you're using or you're just asking to be injured. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And there's uh I know it was uh it was on the news recently around here that a kid fucking fucking burned the shit out of himself with a fucking Mac mod in his pocket. Hello, Angel's just jumped in the chat, which I've not seen. Uh, hey, she's not been. Uh, she's not been around lately. I've not seen no post oh, on Instagram either. It's great to see Brandy. Yeti said, "Personally, I don't know why, but I can't stand seeing a tank on a mech." Which, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Saying, it doesn't. It's look not good. aesthetically pleasing. No, it doesn't look nice. Well, the worst thing is using. I mean, again, the worst thing is any kind of factory coil. You must never, 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 never put a factory coil of any kind on a mech mod or hybrid mod. It's just not, that's not what you do. It's like, I feel like when you first start vaping, it's so easy to just think that everything's compatible with everything, and that's where people go wrong. Yeah. And- like, when I first started vaping, <laughs> I had no idea what the difference between mechanical mods and regulated mods were. I had to search Google for, like, eight hours trying to figure out what oh. all this stuff meant. Right. <laughs> And then I found, you know, the YouTube where you can find out everything about everything. Right. Like, here's my avocado on my rig. This thing's great. But, I mean, the avocado is basically an RDA. Yeah, exactly. It's not, I mean, yeah. it's a tank, but it has a straight pin that goes from the bottom up to the yeah. next to the positive, and it has a velocity deck. That's yeah. why I love Like, these. if it's a rebuildable, then nine times out of ten, the 510 will be good for a hybrid. 
Yeah, and uh, James also said if if anybody walks into the shop with a, a tank on a mech, he won't allow them to vape it in the shop. Yeah, I tell you, if you have a if you have a clear miser coil, a factory coil on a mech, you're crazy. Yeah, you're you're dead crazy. And I and you're like you're like the people tanks. that build to like point one on a noisy cricket. <laughs> yeah, not a yeah. good idea. I feel but that's like not I a good idea for a different in, reason. I feel like I've been in like videos where people are debating about the safety of noisy crickets, and people will literally all be in the chat like, "I boy, I build down to point one five. Oh. It's fine." Like, Idiots. no, it's not. Well, what that underscores is that they that, that they shouldn't own one. So hot. What that underscores is that they shouldn't own one because they don't understand what exactly. the safety is. If they understood the safety issues, they'd be see that that's not safe. I have to like no. give people like a pre-screening to sell them like yeah. mods like that. Yeah. On any, on any unregulated series mod, except from obviously things like the hexome that you can actually change the voltage output. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't be building below point three anyway to be safe. Because you know well, what I mean, you're doing. Like anything with no chip or any electronics inside of it, like yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, for the, like for example, I've got this avocado right now, the twenty two on this rig V two, and the thing about it is, is that I've got this thing built for my other mods in eighty watts, so. I'm not getting that. The, the ramp up time is heinous. You know, it's not even a good vape. I'd have to rebuild yeah. this to be lower to be on the single battery mod. And, uh, you know, whoop de doo I, I usually vape on regulated mods, but I understand the safety issues. But I, you can certainly, if you like, vape with this. But man, if I saw somebody with a crown tank or something, I would just go <laughs> postal. Did you yeah, laugh? Like, yeah. Stop. I know, right? You don't know what you're Jesus doing. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Your yeah, iJoy tank. Steve's also said they they question customers on Ohm's Law before selling them a mech mod. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to. to. Sure. Yeah. Because that goes back on the shop. Like, oh, yeah. shop owners are being negligent. And, like, yeah. which there are shops around here that I wouldn't trust doing stuff like that. But luckily, the, the like, real, like, good shop that's here is, like, I always liked all the people that were there. And they were always right. good at, like, <clears throat> informing people about stuff like that. Right. As in, like... I remember when I first started building, I called up there and I was like, oh, hey, like I was trying to figure out about getting a dripper and I didn't know how to build coils at the time. And the guy was like, well, we won't build it for you, but we'll teach you how to build, which was like, that was pretty cool that they like actually like took the time to like show me how to do it. Yeah, that is cool. Virtually all the places out there will build stuff for you, though. Like I know that there's like a lot of shops around here that like tailor to like the like real beginner vapors like. Like around here, there's like Vape Super Center. That's like a lot of the like premium, like kind of like high end stuff. But then you go to places around here that are like the place called Smoke Revolt. They just sell like cheap starter kits and like cheap juice and yeah, stuff they like have that. Smoke in their name. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I hate that. Yeah. Oh, hey, we're, we're going over on our time limit. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, we're just well, chatting fun. away. Yeah, that's what we do. We say we're having a totally fun Saturday morning chat. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, none of us have taken care of ourselves yet. We all just woke up and grabbed coffee and got on Skype. <laughs> Came here to talk to you. So let's just wrap this up in the next few minutes here. Don't have to do it too long. It looks like everybody in the in the audience is concerned with Ohm's Law and making sure everyone understands it. So it's nice to see somebody. Well, good for all of these guys. Yeah, and most of the people who work at the shops and stuff chime in and say that they always try to either orient people, ask them things, don't tell them, don't sell them mechs unless they understand. And that's all good. Well, that's what yeah. we need. People yeah. like you. That's right. Yeah. Brandy's just saying uh, near her, another shop's just closed, and they only have one shop now. Oh, bummer. That's too yeah. bad. Hopefully that, that shop steps up their game. Yeah. That, that reminds me, I need to ask Brandy how close she is to uh, my friend's new... My friend, who is the drummer for a band, just opened up a coffee shop. He and I met years ago in coffee. And he opened up a coffee shop in his hometown in Montana. And I'm going to get Brandy to go there. No. Yeah, I think it's Missoula, I think. I'm not sure. And uh, Steve was saying that there needs to be a quiz app for phones and tablets that people need to pass before they can buy, like, yes, Megbox and stuff. Exactly. I, that too. I love that idea. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, that's killer. Okay, well, that's that's how we're going to... That's how we're going to stop then with the lesson on safety. So there we are. You guys all know we should know Ohm's Law. This is Vaping Dawn to Dusk, and I'm Juicy Jones, and that's Polish Vapes UK, and this is our guest, Pain Vapes, Sean Payne. And we thank you. You guys have anything to say to the audience before we take off? It's been a pleasure. 
Uh, I would like to say, uh, come on England tonight, first game in the Euros. Yay! And we have uh, 19 days left to find out if they're going to close down the TPD. Oh, okay. So, fingers crossed. (laughs) All right. So, we're all looking at that too, and ours is August coming up here. Uh, yep. So everybody, I want to remind you to follow Pain Vapes on Instagram over there. It's at Pain Vapes. Follow me on Instagram at, at Juicy Jones HQ, and follow Luke at Polish Vapes UK. And also, if you like these videos, like and subscribe. We love you guys. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, guys. Shall we vape out, my friend? Next show. Way. Thank you.